Family of God, I'm back on the 22nd of the 7th, 2020, much to my surprise, but I cannot make, I cannot wait to make this video because the message is amazing and this was not on my radar, it was a surprise from the Lord last night and he gave me confirmation this morning. The confirmation was so funny. Our Father in Heaven has a, a wonderful sense of humour. But it was a perfect example, and you will know what I mean in a minute. Our God is so incredible, what he can show us in a small snippet of a moment, and we, it just speaks absolute volumes. So brothers and sisters, let's begin. This is all about those of us in the body of Christ that feel like somehow we just don't fit in. Or maybe we go along to church and we feel like we are second rate. That we're nowhere near as holy as others there. Or maybe we just don't feel like we can ever meet the um, rules and regulations and um, this, the level of holiness that others exhibit. But brothers and sisters, I'm telling you now. The, our Father in Heaven has got a message for us that shows that you are treasured beyond measure and that you are fully fledged citizens of Heaven and that you are loved and He sees beyond the veil of superficiality to the heart of the matter. So I'm excited about this video because it's such a wonderful, wonderful story that He's telling us. The reason I'm showing you this picture is the first vision I had before I was given anything else was of a house that was, it was already set up brothers and sisters. The house looked orderly but somebody was walking through it with something in their arms. I couldn't actually see what it was but I felt that they were moving in to a house that was already set up. And I think the Lord is, uh, when you see the rest of this uh, story that he has for us, you will see the message in this. Um, but what the Lord is showing us is that um, he is speaking to people who are new Christians that are moving into the house of God, who have become new citizens of heaven, and they might feel a little bit out of place. And he's telling you, no. You are not out of place. You are treasured beyond measure. Now the next thing that the Lord gave me last night was a verse. It was just a scripture given to me in my heart and I wrote it down in the dark. And um, I wrote down Isaiah 3.56. But the verse was actually Isaiah 56.3. But even that little um, maybe mistake made has incredible um, importance um, in this story. And I'll explain why. There's quite a few twists and turns in this. And I please, I really encourage you to go through to the end. Because our God is incredible. And the things he showed me were just amazing. Don't give up at the start of this because I just want to surprise you with some amazing things. So this is Isaiah 56 verse 3 and it is Do not let the son of the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord speak saying Sorry The Lord has utterly separated me from his people Nor let the eunuch say Here I am a dry tree just before we go on and study that scripture and the ones around it, I just want to read what a eunuch is. So a eunuch is a man who has been castrated, especially in the, one, in the past, one employed to guard the woman's living areas in an, at an oriental court. And you can see underneath it says the other meaning is an ineffectual person. And they've given an example, a nation of political units, eunuchs. In other words, a nation of 
um, people that are ineffectual in their politics. So brothers and sisters, just remembering a eunuch was known to be an ineffectual person. Doesn't that sound like a terrible label for anybody to be thought of as ineffectual? And that's why this message is all about those who are new to the body of Christ or who feel they are ineffectual and not important. Just going back to the verse he actually gave us, which was Isaiah 56, 3. Do not let the son of the foreigner or the new person who has been joined, who has joined himself to the Lord, a new Christian maybe, speak saying, sorry, I have to do this. The Lord has utterly separated me from his people. Nor let the eunuch, the ineffectual person say, here I am just a dry tree. The Lord said at the beginning of verse 3, Do not let these people say these things. They are not ineffectual. They are not unimportant. Okay, just reading on from verse 4. What does the Lord say to the eunuchs? For thus says the Lord to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths and who choose what pleases me and hold fast to my covenant, even to them, even to them, the eunuchs who feel they are ineffectual, I will give in my house and within my walls a place and a name, better than that of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. So the Lord is making particular mention of those that feel less than the others in the group who feel that they don't fit in and are undeserving. Let's read that again. To the eunuchs, the Lord said, who keep my Sabbath and choose what pleases me and hold fast my covenant, even to them I will give in my house and within my walls a place and a name, better than that of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And, um, one of the other important things about these few verses of scripture is that the Lord speaks of justice and salvation and righteousness. And this is Isaiah 56 verse 1. This is what the Lord says, maintain justice, do what is right, for my salvation is close at hand and my righteousness will soon be revealed. And we all know that um, it seems that the end is near that the time for we, our Lord to return and take his bride away is closing in. And just as that verse said, my salvation is close at hand. And in the meantime, the Lord wants us to maintain justice and do what is right. And this just ties in so well with the example he gave me this morning when I asked for confirmation. So hold that in your heart and t for just a few minutes until I explain that. And in Isaiah 56, 7, this scripture is there. There's so many treasures in this chapter. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, not just the Jewish people, not just those who seem high and holy, but for all people. Do you remember in verse 3, it said, Do not let the son of the foreigner of um, who has joined himself to the Lord speaks say, saying that he doesn't fit in. Sorry, I've just paraphrased that. Um, so it's for everybody. Foreigners aren't excluded. Eunuchs aren't excluded. Nobody is excluded. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Now everyone, when I noticed this morning, after I'd read those scriptures in Isaiah 56, I suddenly looked down at the verse that I'd written during the night and I saw, saw that it was actually I had written down Isaiah 3, 56, not Isaiah 56, 3. And I thought, oh, it's meant to be Isaiah 3, 56. So I flipped to Isaiah 3 and um, there is no verse 56. And I thought, oh, I transposed it in the night when I was half asleep. But I then started to doubt whether I could bring the message to you, even though I felt it was right, because um, of that little mistake. 
I thought, how can I be absolutely sure that this is from the Lord? I'm going to have to seek confirmation. So I prayed this morning. I've got a quiet house. I dozed a little bit um, in the bed just in my waking hours after praying and asked for confirmation that Isaiah 56.3 was indeed the original word he wanted to me to bring. The long and the short of it is, he then took me into a very short snippet of a dream. And what I saw was a woman dressed in white. It was a short gown, but very nice. And she came out from behind some curtains on a stage in the wings of the curtains. And she ran to stand by a chair just at the, at the edge of the stage. So she wasn't being seen by anyone at the moment. And um, as she ran to her position by the chair to be called on, she fell over, very clumsily fell over. And basically that was all I saw. I saw her scramble herself up and stand by the chair. And suddenly the Lord implanted in my heart who this person was. And I knew immediately the message he was giving me. And you're going to laugh, guys, but it was um, Sandra Bullock. From Miss Congeniality, the movie. Now, don't turn this off when you hear about this because I'm not condoning um, beauty pageants, but the Lord has chosen a perfect example. It's absolutely perfect. And um, I laughed that He'd given me this, but it's so perfect. So let's look at that. Now, the reason I was showing you these pictures in my Bible of Isaiah 3 is um, I read the scriptures in Isaiah 3 before I had this dream to see what this message was, and it all ties in. It's as if the Lord wanted me to make that mistake, so I looked at both scriptures, because when you look down here, it speaks of the warning to the woman of Jerusalem. And we're just going to look at a few verses. Verse 16, the Lord said, Look how proud the woman of Jerusalem are, they walk along with their noses in the air and they're always flirting. They take dainty little steps and the bracelets on their ankles jingle. But I will punish them. I will shave their heads and leave them bald. And then he says in verse 18, A day is coming when the Lord will take away from the woman of Jerusalem every, everything they are so proud of, the ornaments they wear on their ankles and their heads and on their necks and on their wrists. He will take away their veils and their hats and magic charms that they wear on their arms and on their waists. Okay, guys, so let's look at Miss Congeniality. Now, this is the movie with Sandra Bullock in it, and Sandra Bullock was a um, undercover cop who took part in a beauty pageant because there was mischief and injust injustice um, in the um, higher ranks of the uh, leaders of the pageant, and um, so she was uh, totally unprepared. She was a misfit. And this is what the Lord's talking to us about. She didn't feel she fitted in. She had no um, glamour. She was not coordinated. She was clumsy. And um, she was really like the most unlikely candidate. But the Lord showed us this particular movie because in the end, she was um, she spoke up for justice. She saw beyond people's superficiality to the true inner um, value of people, her other contestants that she was working alongside. Um, she exposed injustice. She um, loved people and cared about people. And she was crowned Miss Congeniality the, and just as the Lord sees beyond our clumsiness, he sees the princess in us. And guys, um, I hope you see the value in this as well. Um, he sees the value in each of us, man and woman. We might feel we don't fit in, but he sees our heart and he knows that we have so much value and we are treasures to him. We are the brides of Christ. And so I'm just going to show you a few very quick snippets from the movie. Special Agent Gracie Hart is as tough as nails. She's got a lot of range. <laughs> and she's completely unpolished. <laughs> Honey. 
Well, as I um, said before, that Miss Congeniality, she was a, an undercover cop. So her name was Gracie. And um, that was what just the little snippet I showed you at the beginning was that she was very uncoordinated, very clumsy and seemed like an unlikely beauty pageant contestant. Okay. So that little snippet was just of how they were um, trying to transform her from a clumsy cop into a beauty pageant contestant and they had to do everything from teeth to hair and nails and gave her a thorough makeover. In the end everyone, um, Gracie did her job amazingly well and even though she struggled to fit in um, and to feel like she was part of the group. Um, at the end, she was given the, the award uh, where she was voted, with all the other contestants voted for her as being Miss Congeniality, as in she was the one that gave the most to the group because she cared for them and um, she was real. She didn't hide behind um, superficiality, but she was real and she cared. And uh, brothers and sisters, just as we feel raw, we feel undeserving at times. We don't feel holy enough to be the bride of Christ. Um, he sees the treasure within. That's what I'm trying to say. And we are his true bride, male and female. Um, and that's what the story is all about. And I think if you watched that movie, you would just see so many hidden treasures in that story. Um, but this is what the Lord is saying in that verse in Isaiah 53, um, verse 6, was, oh, sorry, is that right? Sorry, just a minute. <laughs> sorry, guys, Isaiah 56, verse 3. It doesn't matter if you are a foreigner. It doesn't matter if you are a eunuch, somebody that people look down upon. Um, you are treasures. You are just as much um, a bride as any of the others. And you have an important role to do, just as Gracie did, to maintain justice and expose evil, um, which is what she did throughout the pageant. Um, so what a perfect example, because the Lord is speaking in this whole chapter about maintaining justice until the day that is close at hand when he comes to get his bride. And he is... Um, talking about in Isaiah 56 verse 3 as I've already mentioned many times about those that feel that they are a misfit and that they're undeserving this is for you and I couldn't help thinking um, when I asked for confirmation this morning I never expected anything quite like this but can you see what a sense of humor the Lord has and that it was a perfect example praise God Brothers and sisters, and the movie theme song is called One in a Million. That's you. Sign from the sky, said to me, 